All right, this video is somewhat spurned into action by some other posts. Um, on the Flames of War website, they've actually had a, a few web posts about making a Puma armored company for Flames of War. Now, I'm pretty sure this is in response to the Bag Ration German book coming out, but strangely enough, uh, I have this book. This is not a new book. This is the D-Day German book for Flames of War. And this little thing has actually the four forces I don't mind playing in here, but it has the Puma company, not directly, it has the stat card. And then you go, you can get this sucker, this being the Puma Company card, that allows you to actually play the Scout Company. Thank God it's zero point build. But in any sh uh, short case, looking at this, the Puma Scout Company is uh, an alternate build you can make, and it clearly says that the of units available are one headquarters unit, a ton of Puma, or armored section is really a better way to say it. There's only two uh, two Pumas per section, so they're not a fighting force. They used to be. When I first got a hold of the uh, Puma, it was because they released a PDF called the uh, yeah, Panzer of Klar uh, Squadron, and the uh, Panzer of Klar Squadron PDF had uh, half-track reconnaissance, armored car reconnaissance, and then Pumas, and and Lukes as well in the same in the same list. And you can get them in spots of three back then when they first released the PDF. This, as you can tell by having looked at it, it uh, allows you to take up to 12 Puma troops. They're really just a little section. They're not really a full troop of anything. Uh, nothing to two of the 7.5-centimeter uh, uh, support gun version of the same armored vehicle. And you can take a reconnaissance platoon. To clarify what that reconnaissance platoon is, it is a infantry choice that can be mounted in half-tracks. So that's what that is. So this allows me to take... A Puma troop. Now the funny thing about this is it's actually a more restrictive choice than what you would normally get playing a normal reconnaissance company. This one, you have two choices of reconnaissance platoons, well three actually, two being mandatory, and then you have other things you can bring in including uh, the tank cutter platoon, armored gun platoon, uh, you know, various different half tracks as well. And this thing, actually this is actually a pretty nice selection if you remember correctly, the other one just said, take as many Pumas as, you know, as legitimate, and then you get these guys, and then essentially a reconnaissance platoon just like that. So, much more restrictive in your choices, but it allows you to take a ton of Pumas. Now, funny thing about that is that it's still, there's still hope for the Puma player in 4th edition. Back when I made the Puma forces, they had all kinds of interesting support options. Here... Not only can you bring up the 12 Pumas in, a, uh, in your force, where is it? You'll notice by looking at the uh, German support chart for this book, you can bring Pumas as support units anyway, so you can actually max out at 14 Puma troops. So what you could possibly do is spend two points for headquarters, about a good uh, 48 points, I think it is, on uh, uh, Puma troop units, two of which will be support, you get two copies of the, uh, the support gun they have, and then you have, you know, the obligatory infantry. The uh, the lowest it can spend is seven points for just a basic uh, five stand unit, up to a fully equipped with half tracks and Panzerfausts. You can bring uh, for fourteen points. You get seven of those. So you have choices there. But if you were to go full retard and just buy all of the possible Pumas you could out of this book. Uh, that that takes up 86 points. Yes, that's everything, including the uh, the reconnaissance troops, the endless Pumas, the support type Pumas, and the headquarters. All of that is 86 points, and that's a lot. Because in a 100-point game, you then have, what, 14 points to buy something else with? That's like, what, two Stugs and two anti-aircraft tr tracks? Not much. So... The question is, the way I'm looking at it, is that the Puma tracks actually are more of a, they're a very light way to put together an additional company in your Flames of War force. If you just take the headquarters, which is two points, let's say two of those, which is four points, that's a minimum, that's ten points. You'll have the accounts for morale and everything. Now it's minimal. These are not very strong forces. It's got armor three, it's open topped, it's 
only two of them. So the moment one of them dies or bails out, you're taking morale tests, and their morale tests are not terrific. They get reluctant in this version. So they're uh, they're pretty nasty that way. Reluctant? That's not great morale at all. They'll run. So these are not strong forces. So if you want to be more reasonable, take let's say four of these instead of two. So you have enough Pumas that you have nine Pumas, including the headquarters unit. You spent seven points for the you know five stand infantry squad that comes with the Puma troop. That would make this a 25 point recon force that has token infantry you can cover an objective with, as well as plenty of essentially light armor to run around the field dealing with small stuff. That gives you uh, 75 points left over in a 100 point game. You could actually bring that as an escort to a tiger company or a panther company and probably actually do relatively well with them. That's what I'm thinking when it comes to the Pumas. Now I have 25 Pumas in my possession, but the question really is, is how much do you want to invest in reluctant forces that will pretty much shatter the moment they start taking damage? And they're light. They will start taking damage. They will get hit. They will have bailout results. It's not going to be fun for the Pumas. What then is the option? I've been thinking about several builds at a fourth edition, and things are different because third edition had different setups to everything. I mean, in third edition, you had these guys. Now, keep in mind, there are two listings for the 7.5 tank hunters kicking around this book. The ones I'm thinking about are the ones that come attached to the Panzer Grenadier Company. These are the ones you get when you're buying an extra option in the Flames of War DJ German's book. It's not the Beach Defender version, it's these guys. And they have better stats. I like the fact they have a good gun save compared to, like, the artillery or even the 88s, the famous 88s. Look at that gun save. That gun save is a 4+. plus. They will be dying half the time whenever they get hit. So... My thoughts on that is that, you know, you may want to invest in more durable troops to back up your Pumas. And that's always been my thought. So how would I build this in 4th edition? A lot of my old options go away. Like, I don't even think I get Jagdpanzers in this version. I may actually have to buy the Bag Ration book to get that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my collection and see exactly how far I have to go to make a legitimate army for Flames of War in 4th edition. So here's what I came up with for a half and half force. We've got the advantage of having all the Pumas, kind of. This is um, 16 uh, non-headquarters Pumas, so 8 troops worth. And then of course I brought one of the 7.5 centimeter support platoons. They can come in packs of 3, so they're actually more fight worthy. But this is 100 points, and it's actually modifiable too. So uh, less than 50 of the point value goes into the Pumas and their support. Uh, for 11 points, we get three uh, Pack 40s. And the Pack 40s, if you ask me, they're very nice. They're very durable for a uh, tank hunting gun. So that's pretty cool. Play Normie by taking two Tigers. But they're not just any Tigers. These two Tigers happen to have... They have Kurt Nispel. Kurt Nispel is one of my favorite tank aces ever. He's a very cool dude. He's like the... Uh, the Nega Nazi. He fought for the uh, the Germans and stuff, but he was quite the awesome dude. He never followed regulations, and he got a really good score. Although, unlike most uh, tank commanders who got their score as a tank commander, his was over a wide career covering gunner, tank commander, small. You know, he he had a bunch of different roles he played. So for eight points, I have sucked it up into Kurt Nispel. That's not necessary though. If I want to, I can add. These little guys, this is just a standard, this is my standard uh, token of Panzer Grenadiers. That is seven points for these minimal guys. And then I can add the card Lucky to show that, you know, that this is the last point out of 100 points to bring it in. But yeah, my, uh, my strategy would be to use the Pack 40s and the Tigers as major kill elements. They'll be going after the primary armored center or whatever they're going to be using. And, well... Pumas are reconnaissance forces, but they can also be used to harass um, lighter infantry forces and lighter armored forces. And so these guys would pretty much be swarming over, trying to bypass the enemy, look for objectives, that kind of stuff. These guys would be going out into the front because the uh, three of them together, just morale-wise, can withstand more punishment than two Pumas by themselves. So, yeah, if you ask me, it's not a force that you're going to go out and run and win tournaments with. If someone has, you know, color me surprise. 
But this is uh, just a fun little force to play. For 100 points in version 4, Flames of War, I mean, it fits my collection. I mean, these are things I've had. I've had these since 2000. I had plans to build it since 2009, I think it is, maybe 2008. But I've actually gotten it built and used in uh, 2011 or 2012. I forget which year. But I, I can go uh, double check in the future. But yeah, if you enjoy Flames of War and you enjoy playing with the, uh, the Germans, then this is an option for you. The Germans do have as a, uh, a benefit some of the coolest toys in the arsenal. One of those being the microscopic, adorable, yet still punch-worthy Puma, which I have in their uh, gritty little colors. There's some other things of trivia. Um, there is an editorial that was once put to a modeling magazine a long time ago, and I never found the pictures for the models that the editorial was criticizing. But what happened is a German that had served in World War II, who was now living in 1950s uh, America, criticized the modeling magazine, saying, the models you guys submit are so bright looking. I remember during that time, our tanks were a mix of a dull green and muddy brown. And so I used the official Tamiya spray paint for the uh, middle stone color, but I washed it brown. And I kind of think I got the effect that the veteran remembered, where it's kind of like this ugly wash of brown and green that makes up a German tank. It uses the, um, these are official patterns I found that the Germans actually used on their Pumas. And so I think this is pretty close to being like visually accurate for the force at the time, given what the veteran said. So I'm really wanting to see the so-called pretty German tanks that the, uh, the veteran was making fun of, but there's no record of it. The, the, the editorial that I saw the copy of was not matched to the pictures he was, uh, he was criticizing. So that's just a thing to think about when it comes to painting your Germans. Yes, you can make them that, that bright you know, brown yellow and then put green and brown splotches on them, but did the Germans really look that precise? I mean, they're Germans, but they're not always pretty, especially if they're out there fighting the war. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for uh, dropping by and taking a look at Flames of War content on my channel. I hope to make more Flames of War content in the future, but right now, my Flames of War players locally have dropped to a very low number thanks to recent events. So, yeah. You have a great rest of your week, and thanks for dropping by.